So question two uh, for response for the 2019 AP Chem exam. Um, says answer the following questions relating to the chemistry of the halogens. And part A says the molecular formulas of diatomic bromine, chlorine, fluorine, and iodine are written below. Circle the formula of the molecule that has the longest bond length and justify your choice in terms of atomic structure. So the first thing that clicked in my head when I was looking at this question was, do any of these uh, diatomics have double or triple bonds? And the answer is no. And this becomes really apparent if you write them out. Uh, they're Lewis structures and they're Lewis diagrams. Um, they all have 14 valence electrons, so each one will look very similar to diatomic bromide. Um, a bond in between them and six valence electrons on the outside. And they all look identical to this except with I here. So what you have to look at is the, uh, you have to look at their amount of electrons. So simply looking at a periodic table, if you know your trends, the largest molecules down here, the smallest ones up here with hydrogen up here, you'll notice that iodine is bigger, right? It's just a bigger molecule. So the obvious answer here is I2, but you have to justify that in terms of uh, atomic structure. And the reason for this is it has the most electrons. So it has the most electron shielding, which means that the bond is longer. It's a big leap in logic, but if you think about it, right, the, the more electrons there are, the more they're going to repel each other, which means that there's a greater distance between them at equilibrium. Equilibrium meaning physical equilibrium, not chemical reaction equilibrium. Equilibrium meaning nothing's moving, everything's in its stable state. Um, so I2 here, that's the answer, and simply say I2 has the most electrons, therefore experiences the most electron shielding, therefore having the longest bond length. Uh, and that's it for part A. So part B says, a chemistry teacher wants to prepare diatomic bromine. The teacher has access to three, uh, three reagents, sodium bromide, chloride, and iodide. And it says, using the data in the table below, write the balance equation for the thermodynamically favorable reaction that will produce uh, bromide when the teacher combines two of the reagents. So the first thing you have to really think about is this has to be product, right? That's one of the guidelines the question gives you. So the first step is to write the chemical equation where this is a product. So that's 2Br minus turns into Br2 plus two electrons. And when you flip a reaction, you flip its cell potential, so that becomes negative 1.07 volts. And for something to be thermodynamically favorable, that means that this cell potential has to be positive. And if you add the bottom reaction right here to this, you will get a negative total cell potential. So the reaction below this, the second half reaction, will have to be Cl2 plus 2E minus turns into 2 Cl minus, and that has a cell potential of 1.36 volts. And adding these reactions together, the electrons cancel out per se. Cl2 turns into 2Cl minus plus Br2. And adding these two together, uh, you simply just do 1.36 minus 1.07, which will give you 0 0.29 volts. The correct thing fix here is actually just two decimal places because when you add or subtract, you look at the one that has the least amount of decimal places. So, my bad about the notifications. And you justify this, you say thermodynamically favorable because E cell, you just write E is equal to 0 0.29 volts, which is greater than zero. Therefore, it's thermodynamically favorable. I'm not gonna write that out. There's no point in me writing that out for you guys. So. That's your answer for part B. And justify that with you know, real English reaction. It's thermodynamically favorable because E is greater than zero. And part C says the boiling point of Br2 is 332 Kelvin, whereas the boiling point of BrCl is 278 Kelvin. Explain this difference in boiling point in terms of all the interlocked metal heater forces present between molecules of each substance. So there's nothing special about Br2. There's just 
London dispersion forces. There's no dipole to dipole because it's not polar, it's a symmetric molecule, as you can see from the diagram in part A that I drew. Um, there's no hydrogen bonds because there's no hydrogen, fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen. And even if they did have that, it would have to be the boiling point um, inside gaseous oxygen or inside gaseous nitrogen or whatever. Uh, one of those FON molecules. So part C, I'd explicitly state for Br2, there's LDFs present. There's LDFs present in every molecule. And BrCl, what's present is LDFs and dipole to dipole. Dipole to dipole forces. And just looking at this, it looks like BrCl has um, a greater intermolecular force, which should mean that it has a greater boiling point, but it explicitly gives you that it doesn't. So the correct justification here would be uh, the London dispersion forces in bromide are greater than the combination of the dipole to dipole and the LDFs in BrCl. Um, and explicitly says the intermolecular forces present between molecules of each substance, so you have to explicitly state the LDFs in Br2 and the LDFs in BrCl, as well as the dipole to dipole forces in BrCl. Um, if it just asks you to predict which one is a higher boiling point, it would be BrCl. So the full justification would be the London dispersion forces in Br2 are greater than the combination of the London dispersion forces and the dipole to dipole forces in BrCl, thus Br2 has a higher boiling point. And that would be your answer to part C. Uh, part D says, um, tells you to calculate the pressure in the container before equilibrium is established. Um, so this is simply Pivner. You have the amount of moles. You have the total volume of the temperature. You have the gas constant. And the only thing you're missing is pressure, and that's what it tells you to calculate. So PV equals NRT, dividing V over. Thus, the pressure is NRT over V, which will equal the amount of moles, which is 0 0.1. We get an or six figs in the calculation. 0 0.1. 08206 times the temperature in Kelvin, which is 298 divided by the volume, which is 2. And calculating this, let me pull out a calculator 0.1 times 0 0.08206 times 298 equals 1.22. ATM. Uh, quick side note, you can use whatever gas constant here that you want, um, as long as it matches the unit in your final answer. For example, uh, I use the form of the gas constant that has units liters ATM uh, per mole Kelvin. Uh, if you wanted to use, let's say, the gas constant in the kilopascals, then you could do that. Uh, you just Your unit with pressure will have to be consistent with whatever gas constant you use. Um, and part E says to write the equilibrium expression constant, or equilibrium constant expression for the decomposition of Br or Cl. Um, and it gives you the reaction. It's simple products of reactants. It gives you the reaction right here. So that's KEQ is equal to the product of the concentrations of Br2 and Cl2 over BrCl and the coefficient in the reaction is 2 so you have to square that and that's part E. Part F. The question says after the system has reached equilibrium 42% of the original BrCl sample has decomposed. So this is kind of a weird question because the you have to really logically make some leaps here. So percent composition, let's say for an acid, right? HA dissolving into H plus plus A minus. Just, this is not related to the question, I'm just giving an analogy here. Uh, let's say you have some initial uh, concentration, we'll call it Y. 
the change would be minus x or plus x plus x and y minus x x x. Now the percent compos or the per de percent decomposition, my bad, would be simply this value over this value, right? Because it's simply the ratio of how much it decomposed by definition. So in the same case here, we'll write out the reaction again, 2Br Cl turns into Br2 plus Cl2, you know, I start here. Um, again, we'll call this Y minus 2X and Y minus 2X, 0, 0 plus X plus X x and x and the thing to notice here is that these two concentrations are the same right and akin to the dissolution of an acid the percent composition is equal to x over y in this case which is br to the concentrations over brco but this is also equal to cl2 over BRCO. So really looking at your equilibrium expression, this is just BR over BRCO squared, that entire quantity. Um, so the, and this is equal to 0.42, it gives you that in the problem. So if you want to find the expression for KEQ, you just square all sides of this equation, right? It's a, it's a little rough to think about because I haven't really seen a problem like that before, except on this exam, but it should make a little bit of sense actually just mathematically thinking about it for a little bit. So KEQ is equal to 0 0.42 squared, which equals, plot a calculator, 0.42 times, uh, 0.42 times 0.42, and that's equal to 0 0.176. Uh, if I do make a minor mistake on any of these FRQs that I'm uploading, it's going to be on this problem because I'm really not completely confident with that answer, but it's really the only way I can think about going about that. Um, so part G, we'll do it here because we don't really have any room. Um, calculate the bond energy of the BRCL bond in kilojoules per mole using delta H for the reaction and the information in the following table. So if you remember this formula should at least make conceptual sense to you. Delta H is equal to the bonds broken uh, minus the bonds formed. And the bonds broken are the bonds of the reactants, which is two BRCL bonds. Don't confuse this with a minus sign because it's not a minus sign, it indicates a bond. And the formed ones are the BRBR bond and the CLCL bond. And because you're subtracting the sum of these, you're subtracting both of them. So BR, BR minus CL, CL. And this is all equal to delta H, the reaction, which is given as 1.6. Um, you know the BRBR bond, you know the CLCL bond, so you could just solve 1.6 equals 2x minus uh, that's 193 minus 243. And doing some algebra, you'll get 1.6 plus 193 plus 243 over 2 is equal to x. And this value is, let me get this out, 1.6 plus 193 plus 243 and you'll get x is equal to, keeping it three sig figs, 219 kilojoules per mole. Um, that really should, that value just should make sense. It really makes sense that this is somewhere in between these two bonds. Um, and yeah, that's FRQ number two.